This is a Dell Wise 5060 thin client. There's surplus like this all over eBay. And if you know what you're looking for, this can be a great solution to run Home Assistant. It's fanless, it's got storage, it's got ethernet, it's got display port. I mean, what else could you want? Unlike a Raspberry Pi, you can actually buy it too. So in order to set this up, we're gonna need a little bit of hardware. We're gonna need a cable that goes from display port because this box only has display port to whatever's on our monitor. In this case, it's a display port to HDMI cable. Next, we're gonna need a keyboard and mouse. I have this uh, trackpad thing that I use for setting up new computers. I'm just gonna plug that into USB. We need a network connection with wired ethernet and power. The last thing we're gonna need is a flash drive. This flash drive is gonna get reformatted during the process, so it's gotta be a flash drive you don't really care about. So because Home Assistant doesn't provide an installer, we need to copy the Home Assistant image onto the drive that's already in the thin client. And the easiest way to do that without opening it up is to download a live version of Linux and use that. So we're going to download Xubuntu, which is nice and easy. In this case, we're not going to use the torrent download. We're going to use the mirror. I'm going to pick United States. And AMD 64, 1.7 gigs. Here we go. Now we're going to use Belain Etcher to image the flash drive. So it already automatically found my generic USB flash drive. And so we're going to pick the Xubuntu install. And so if we wanted to pick, there's only found one. And then we click flash. And then we wait. Windows popped up. Yep, Windows pops up with a bunch of uh, junk. You just keep closing it. So once this is done, we can plug it into the thin client and continue from there. So I'm going to power on the machine, and then I'm going to hit the delete key a whole bunch of times, which should take me to the setup screen, and I get here. And so now I need to enter the password. And if you Google online a bit, you can probably find that the password for almost all these things is the same. And for pretty much every Dell model, it's Fireport with a capital P. And that takes us to the BIOS. So now that we're in the BIOS, we have a couple of settings we need to change. Uh, so nothing on this screen, but we can see here we have... Uh, 4 gigs of RAM and a 16 gig SATA flash drive. So not too bad, that's plenty for Home Assistant. So on this screen we need to enable boot from USB, which may or may not be disabled already, and we need to change boot mode to enable UEFI. So I'm going to set it to both, so it will enable legacy or UEFI boot. And then the last one up here is auto power loss recovery. So this is probably off. It, it might be in any state when you get it. I set it to always on, which means as soon as you plug in the power cable, the, the unit's going to boot up on its own. And so you don't have to go reboot it if you have a power outage. Next ones, we need to look at our boot priority. So by default, it'll boot from the solid state drive. And we would like to boot from the USB flash drive. So just hit the minus key to send the SATA, SATA 0 down to the bottom. And that'll mean that it'll boot from our USB flash drive instead of from the SATA drive. Now we exit saving changes, and we should boot into our USB Xubuntu. We're going to say try without installing. Okay, now we got a cursor. Here comes our Xubuntu desktop. There it is. So it shows we have a 15 gig volume, which in this case is our, our SSD. Uh, and currently it's actually formatted for Linux, so we don't have to change anything there. So now we have a couple things we need to do. So now we need to download Belena Etcher for Ubuntu so that we can run it to image Home Assistant onto the system disk. So download for Linux x64 and open with the archive manager. And then we'll just take this app image file and drag it onto the desktop. So we'll need it later. And now I'm going to pull up the Home Assistant page. That has the download link. So you go to document, you go to getting started, installation, 
generic x86 64 and then write image to boot media and there's a link here that we're going to need in just a second. So the other thing that might be important depending on what you've used this thin client for before um, we might want to wipe the file system first with gparted. So in this case it says we have a, a drive here that's ext4 and a drive here that's the EFI system partition. So if you've used this thin client for something other than Linux, or you've used a file system other than ext4, you should probably delete the partition table and recreate it. Um, in my case, I was I was playing with ZFS on this, and that really messed up the drive. I have a ZFS boot system, so we're just going to go and delete both of these. And then we're going to create a partition table. Oh, we have to apply this first. So then we're going to create a new partition table of the MS-DOS type. And then we're going to create a new partition. And we'll just say uh, FAT32. That's just generic enough. Because it seems like Valena Etcher isn't correctly writing the MS-DOS partition table type. So if you had something on here, like a ZFS drive, in my case, it uh, it would not like it. It's possible that as, as it comes to you already, it might be okay. It depends on what was installed in it before. So now we have a almost a 16 gig FAT32 drive. So now we're going to go to Blaine Etcher, which we downloaded over here. There it comes. And oops, we're going to tell Blaine Etcher flash from URL. We're going to go back over here to Home Assistant and copy that, that GitHub link, and paste it in here. And then it's going to download it into RAM. Okay, now we can select target. So in this case, it shows the drive that our Xubuntu install is actually on. So this is a 2 gig flash drive that's our, our bootable Xubuntu install. And so we are going to show all, and then we're going to pick this ATA 16 gig drive, which it says is the system drive, which is true, it is the system drive, but we're trying to image this home assistant onto the system drive. So we're going to select that. It's going to warn us, are you sure you want to choose the system drive? And we're sure we're going to image the system drive. Here we go. So now we give it a few minutes. Okay, we're done. So now we need to reboot. It's going to try to open all the new file systems we just put on that drive. So Home Assistant has quite a diff few different volumes. Uh, so now we're going to reboot. So we're going to click the little power button here. And we're going to say restart. And then it's going to ask us to take the flash drive out. Okay, so we're going to pull out the flash drive and push enter. We should come up into Home Assistant. Okay, so Home Assistant has started up. And it tells us where to go, in this case, 172.27.8.245. So let's go there and see what it looks like. So now we got Preparing Home Assistant, and we just got to wait this out. So now we're at the normal Home Assistant setup screen. From here, it's like any other Home Assistant tutorial. We've gotten the software, we've installed it on the thin client, and it's running. And I'll just prove it by setting this install up. Suggest Amsterdam. Sure, we'll do Amsterdam. It's our favorite time zone. America, New York time zone.
So I found all kinds of stuff around my house. Here we are, here's Home Assistant. So from here you can configure it like any other Home Assistant install. We're running with the supervisor, so all of the supervisor functions are accessible, including the add-on store. You should be able to run Z-Wave and Zigbee using the USB ports on this thing. So overall it's a, it's a pretty nice little box. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please consider liking and subscribing so YouTube can recommend more from me in the future.